What is up guys, it's your boy Grenlam G and t t today I'm bringing you another episode of Storytime. Unfortunately Gremlin G Jr. isn't here and Mrs. Gremlin G uh, so it's just going to be me and I don't have any books for you guys so I'm sorry about that. I will get some books, don't worry. I've got a book coming. Ugh. Ugh. Didn't sound like a burp at all. Anyway. So, it's just going to be a made-up one. You're just going to have to use your vision for this, you know, and picture, you know, picture it in your head. The story is called The Big Poo, okay? So, without further ado, let's just get cracking on with this. Okay, so it all starts with this guy called John. Now, John is a lovely guy. He likes art, he likes going out with his friends, he he loves his girlfriend, he has a girlfriend, her name's Claudia, um, lovely girl, she's in school studying at the moment, in university, obviously, um, and yeah, he, he, he's a, just a general stand-up guy, he does go, he goes to the gym, he likes to run, no, he, he's just lovely, he's quite active, he's quite funny, um, and he can be quite mellow. Anyway, John, you know, he likes to go out to these places, like I explained, and he had a ticket to go to this, um, this show, this, this gallery show, you know, it's an art, art gallery show, and he was psyched, he was really psyched for it. So he rang up Claudia and went, Claudia, 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 I've got some tickets. I really want to go to this show. You want to come? And Claudia said, you know, oh, babe. Oh, babe. Mm. I, you know, mm. I would love to, but I'm just going to, you know, hold off because I've got, I've got shit to do. I've got stuff to do, babe. I can't. I can't. I, I would love to. But I've got to get out of my coursework. Yeah, I'm sorry, babe. You're just going to have to go on your own. And he's just like, you what? He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he's like, not to worry, babe. Not to worry. I'll film it. And she's like, yeah, please, please do. Please do. Send me the pictures. Send me the pictures. I love to see the pictures. And then they hung up the phone and, you know, and John got ready, got his stuff, but before he left, he, you know, he had some breakfast, and had a couple of bananas, he had, um, you know, he had a couple of bacon sandwiches as well, and a chicken Caesar, you know, it was, it was, he had a good meal, a good feast, he got on the train, walked down, got on the train, went straight to, um, To Charlie Town, which is the next town, it's like five miles away. Bish bash bosh, he was at Durban. It was, he was ecstatic, ecstatic to be at this event. So we did this walk around and saw, you know, all these fantastical, whimsical, lovely art galleries. He was just like, yeah, that art piece over there in the corner of just a mannequin is amazing. That sheet on the wall is just symbolic. Um, and this painting of a triangle that is just like the same colour is just immaculately amazing. And I just need it because it's, it's just amazing, you know. So he's walking around seeing all these, these paintings that are just coloured in the same colour. And he was just mesmerised by them. And occasionally there would be the odd one where it would just be a sheet on the floor. But he could understand it in a way that nobody else could. He thought it was just an amazing show. But halfway through the show, he had this pain, yeah? And it was a poo brewing. He had a poo brewing in his backside. And he, he, he knew it, but it didn't face him because... It was a low-key poo, you know, it, it was brewing, but he, he thought, you know what, I can hold off till I get home, you know, it's not that bad, you know, I'll just walk around and it, 
it's nothing, it's nothing. So he continued watching some uh, blank arts, and it was, you know, he thought it was amazing. You know, after the show, after once he did his walk around, he was like, you know, I'm going to sit down and have some chips. So he had some chips, and he had a glass of champagne, you know, glass of champagne, as you do. And uh, he thought, oh, that's a fair one, because he could see the fairest one. So I thought, I might as well just stumble down and see what all the fuss is about. So he did. He stumbled down, you know. And then halfway through the stumble down, uh, you know, this low-key poo kind of upped a notch. And it was like a a three-key poo. You know, it was a, it was a three-key poo. And he was like, ah, right. It's getting to be a bit of a problem. But still... It's not that bad. Oh, I could hold it. You know, it's fine. You know. So he continued. He continued on. Got to this show. No, not the show. The, the fair. And was like, yeah, oh, this is sick. You know, they've got a Ferris wheel. They've got some bowls. they got some gun games. It was awesome. So he was just checking all of it out. And then uh, he, he decided to have some candy floss. You know, as you do. And... Decided to eat some more food and he had a hot dog and a burger. You know, as you can probably tell that John likes to eat a lot. And then, um, you know, midday, he he, had a, he, need, he really needed a poo. Um, it was like a five-key poo now. It was a bit of half and half. He was like, oh, god damn it. Where am I? Mm, I need a poo. Like, what am I going to do? Hmm. So John was thinking, you know, it's getting, you know, 50-50, like, it would help if I went for a poo, but I think I could hold it off a little bit. So he held it off, brave move, brave move, if you don't ask me, if you don't mind me asking, brave move, you know, saying, sorry, brave move. So he decided to just let it be and hopefully the poo will kind of calm down and be like I need a rest I've I've worked too hard I need a rest I've I've worked too hard of trying to bury out of your anal hole so I'm, I need a rest but you know it got on an hour and it was still like kind of throbbing in, in the anal and uh, next hour it was like Nothing. He was like, oh, lovely. The poo phase is gone. So he had some food, some more food. You would have thought that he loved, but he likes his food. He went back to the gallery. And, um, you know, he had another look around. And then, then, when he got halfway around, it hit him all of a sudden. Bang! He really needed a poo. It gone from a five to a nine. It was it was painful. He was so desperate, and he was in the middle of this art place, and he he really didn't know what to do. So he was running around, darting around the place, while the security guards were like, "Oi, yo, calm down! No running, walking, please, slow down." And Tom was like, "Look, look, I'm sorry, but where is the toilet? It's an urgency. This is an emergency." And the guy was like, Oi, alright, you want the toilet? It's right down this hallway. Take a left, take a right, down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs, up the stairs, across the hallway to the left side, up the stairs, take a right, keep him going down there, then go down the stairs, take a right, take the stairs down again. And then go through the hallway, and then you go up the stairs, down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs. And then you go down the stairs, go straight down the hallway, take a right, take a left. And it should be on your left-hand side. If not, just get the elevator, and it's, there's another set of toilets on the next floor. Um, so John was like, right, 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 right. 
right, so he just sprinted, you know, and he really, really needed a shit. I mean, it was a nine. It was creeping up to a 9.5, and he was like, damn, I got a go. So, he managed to go up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs, take a left, right, blah, 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 and get to the toilets. But they were out of service. There was water all over the place. Somebody had previously did a massive dump in there and blocked the toilet so bad that it was just overflowing. There was shit everywhere, piss everywhere, all the loos flooded. They were, they were blocked off, as well as the women's. They were just blocked off. Don't know who did that, the skanky bitch. Anyway, so he thought, oh, I can get the elevator. So he was pressing the elevator, but the elevator wasn't working. So how does he get upstairs? Well, there was a window there, so he decided to open the window, and there was a tree as well. So he jumped on the tree and climbed up the tree to the next floor where there was a window. But the only trouble is, how is he going to get it? So he, he kind of went into his pocket, got his wallet, and chucked it out the window. Well, one of the exhibitors was like, open the window, was it? Hey, young boy, what are you doing there? And John went, oi, love, keep the window open. I need to jump in so I can use the bathroom. I've got a 9.5 turd coming. And she was like, no worries, I understand. So he jumped, brave, because he could die. He grabbed hold of the uh, windowsill and crawled in. And some of the guys were just like, what the fuck is going on here? Who is this guy? He was like, don't worry, I really need a poo. And just before he looked, he was out of service. So it's like, oh my God. His poo had gone from, you know, a 9.5 to probably a 9.6. And he was like, oh my God, how is this going to happen? So what he did was he, he jumped out the window again. Which one of the people like, no, don't, don't kill yourself. He was like, too late. He, he, he grabbed hold of the tree, kind of pulled, slid down it like a pole, running all over the place. And uh, he was like, where am I going to go? 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 Can I shit in the bush? No, too many people, too many people. I can't shit myself. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh. So he was got into the courtyard bit and he was just running around in circles just on the door kind of like moaning a little bit like <laughs> kind of like weeping a little bit like I need a poo I need a poo and uh, you know then he just started crying like <laughs> this poo is too hot I need to go to the toilet hmm? so he was like looking on his phone for Google Maps on toilets and he noticed there was a pub around the corner that he could go to so he went to the pub called the shit in And it was, you know, out of order. So he was like, Jesus fucking Christ. What does a man need to do to take a shit? And he really, really needed to go for a poo. So he was, you know, desperate. So what he did was he got into a car somehow, you know, stole a car, drove to a house, knocked on the door, and uh, one last one. Yes. Right. Oh, hi there. My name is John. Yes. Yeah. Can I use your bathroom? No. Why not? I don't know you. What do you want? Well, I just need to use your bathroom because I really, need, really, really, really need a poo. And the top out like a 
Okay. So can I use your bathroom? No. And the woman just slammed the door on me. What a horrible woman. So John was so enraged that he decided to take a poo. Well, try and attempt to do a poo in her bush. Now, he undid his trousers and he really, really couldn't. He struggled. He, he was like... <coughs> couldn't get it out and he decided to give up on that one. So, pulled up his trousers and he, you know... He walked up to this little pat green patch and there was a pigeon there and said, Pigeon... I really, really need a poo. Please help me find where the nearest toilet is. And the pigeon turned around to him and went, If you give me some food, I'll try and help you, love. And so he was like, Well, I've only got some crumbs. Is that all right? And the pigeon was like, Mate, crumbs is probably like the best I've eaten today. He was like, okay, here you go, mate. Go out some crumbs. And he went, right, well, thank you for the food. Now piss off. And John was like, how? Whoa, 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 I just want some food. The pigeon was like, mate, I'm a fucking bird. See ya. And the pigeon flew off. And John was like, you, you, you little shit. So... John decided, enough's enough. What is he going to do? And he saw a village. Uh, town hall. You know, uh, so he decided, I'm going to walk into that town hall village. And just say, he walked in, and he just shouted, Ladies and gentlemen, I need the toilet. Where is the toilet? And everybody just pointed the corner. And there was a bucket on the floor in the corner. And that was the toilet. It said toilet across it. So John was a bit sceptical about pooing in front of everybody. But what he did was he just he did it anyway. He got a whiteboard and put it in front of him. And then just sat on this bucket and just sat in the corner of in front of about 50 people. Like literally screaming like... Aah! But like really tense in that. <laughs> trying to squeeze it out. Because he was actually kind of constipated from all the food and shit. He rang up his girlfriend, Claudia, crying. Well, in front of 50 people shitting with a whiteboard in front of him. So there was some kind of, you know, um, secrecy of it. He said, Claudia, I really need a poo. What am I going to do? So Claudia gave him some suggestions, like seating techniques. And, uh, you know, and then he, he tried these techniques, like sitting on the side, like, Arr! he was like, no, that won't work. He was like, how about you put your legs in the air and put your hands in the air and then poop? So he tried that with both legs in the air and both hands in the air, pooing but that didn't work so he thought well how about crossing your legs he tried that didn't work he went through all these suggestions didn't work she said well how about if you stick your hand up your anal passage and try and see if you can grab the poo and kind of, kind of like pull it out so he tried that and uh, he did manage to get to the poo, um, but the poo kind of went soft on him and he only got a little bit out, and then his hands were just covered in shit. So he was like, Love, that was a fantastic idea. If only if my poo was harder, then it could have worked. <laughs> but now, the, I guess the only thing that's made it better is that my anal passage is now wide enough to fit a. Oversheen in it now 
because I've shoved my hand up there. She was like, oh, good. So it should just fall out like a wizard's sleeve. And he went, well, you would think that, but it, it you know, it hasn't. What am I going to do? And then all of a sudden, it just came out. And And all these 50 people looked at him and were like, speechless. The noise that he made, the great roar. He was oh God, Jesus, oh dear, I'm going to have to ring you back. Oh, I'm going to need both hands for this one. Oh. Oh, he just shouts out, uh, can I have a glass of water, please? Oh, 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 God, this feels so good, but so wrong at the same time. I feel like I'm giving birth. So the bartender came over and gave him a glass of water and was like, Oh, that stinks. He was like, Well, I'm taking a shit. So he was like, Yeah, but there's a toilet right next to you. And all along, what they were pointing to was actually the toilet door that looked like the wall, because uh, it was just like the wallpaper covered over with the door as well. And it said toilets. And actually, what he was shitting in actually didn't say toilets. It said toothbrushes. And he just looked like the biggest idiot in the world. And, you know, he just got his bucket and then went into the bathroom, shot some more. <laughs> Oh, 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 God. And, uh, you know, he was, he was like, oh, he was relieved. He was like, oh, my God, that was amazing. Oh, oh, oh. The bartender was like, oi, mate, that's my toothbrush in there. How am I going to clean with that shit on of it? John was like, I don't know. You're going to have to clean that up, mate. You got ya? He was like, oh. And then he just legged it. Legged it out of the... Well, all 50 people got up and chased him with pitchforks. And he saw that pigeon. And uh, the pigeon was like, Oi, mate. I can see you're in a bit of trouble. Hop on my back and I'll uh, I'll fly you to safety. And that's what happened. He hopped on the pigeon's back, which is only about, you know, five inches tall. And he got flown to safety by the super strong pigeon. And as the pigeon, you know, dropped him off, the pigeon was like, don't ask any pigeons more for any more favours, all right? You're a cunt trouble as it is, and I don't like you. Now, piss off. And the pigeon flew off. And uh, John was like, oh, what a lovely pigeon. He went back home to Gordia, and they had a lovely, lovely meal. Um, and they lived happy ever after, until the next poo that he had. Which will be continued. So yeah, that's the end of the story of John's first poo. And tune in to hear about his next story that's even wilder than that one. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.